shaking uh, today i just want to focus on uh, three titles preparation of the final crisis which is coming so we'll talk about the seal we'll talk about the mark and then we'll talk about the preparation of the crisis uh, the bible says in the book of revelation chapter 13 verse 16 and he causes all both free and great rich and poor free and born to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead so now he calls this is a force that is going to be used and that no man might buy nor sell save he that has a mark or the name of the beast or the the name of the beast or the number of his name so now the only people that will be able to buy and sell are those who have received the mark of the book beast uh, the number of his name now the book maranatha page 183 paragraph 2 says to us the time is coming when we cannot sell at any price so in other words when that time has come when the crisis has come we cannot sell at any price neither can we buy at any price the decree will soon go forth prohibiting men to buy or sell of any man save him that has the mark of the beast so now we are talking about the passport the COVID passport to travel the COVID passport to get into the pubs of course these are debates that are happening I'm not saying the COVID the COVID passport is a mark of the beast far far from it far 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 from it but I'm just saying that you know as they are talking that you know with the COVID test with the COVID passport you are not going to have some certain privileges but now with the mark of the without the mark of the beast you are not going to be able to sell at any price so if you are not going to be able to sell at any price how will you survive you buy electricity you buy water you buy gas you buy food you buy clothes you buy everything. How are you going to survive? So hence, there is need for preparation. So that if we believe that Jesus comes in our time, we also need to believe that definitely if he's coming in our time, it actually means that he may, we may actually go through this crisis. Hence, it's very critical that we prepare for this crisis. It says, uh, in the last great conflict of the, con of the controversy, when certain, uh, with certain, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off because they refuse to break his law in obedience to earthly powers. They will be forbidden to buy or sell. So if they will be forbidden to buy or sell, the question is how are we go they going to survive? So now the key here is the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is the passport. But now we are going to define the mark of the beast. But let's actually start with the mark of God, which is the seal of God. The Bible says in the book of Revel Romans chapter 4, verse 11, And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness, of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all that them that believe. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them. So now he received a sign of circumcision, which is a seal of righteousness. Now let's talk about this sign and a seal. The Bible says in the book of Esther chapter 8 verse 8, Write ye also the law for the Jews as it liketh you in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may not, may no man resist this. So now the sealing here was done by the king's ring. The authority was in the king. And when the king has sealed it, nobody can change it. So you need the position to be able to seal something. And then you need to have that which you are to seal. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 22, the Bible says, for the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. So the Lord is the judge, number one. He is the lawgiver, number two. He is also the king. And now when you go to chapter 8, 16 of Isaiah, say, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. So now where, who is the founder of, founder of this law? Is God himself. He is the one that, you know, he's saying, let the law be sealed among my disciples. Let the testimony be bound in my disciples. Now the question is, what really constitutes all this? We are sealed 
the testimony of the Lord is in us. Now, what exactly does that constitute? I like what it says in the book, Great Controversy, page 452, paragraph 1. The Lord commands by the same prophet, bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. That's Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. The seal of God's law is found in the fourth commandment. This only of all the ten brings to view both the name and the title of the lawgiver. It declares him to be the creator of heavens and the earth and thus shows him his claim to reverence and worship above all others. Aside from this precept, there is nothing in the Decalogue to show forth, show by whose authority the law is given. So God is the creator of heaven and earth. He's the one who is in authority, so he gives the law. And then now, he said, now the sign that belongs to him, the law is bound on us. So which law particularly? The fourth commandment. What's that? The fourth commandment says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. So what exactly does this mean? Now when you go to Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 20, the Bible says, moreover I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between them and me that they may know it's me, the Lord that sanctified them. When you go to verse 12, in fact, verse 12 and verse 20, paraphrasing, they said, my Sabbath are a sign between me and my people. So the Sabbath belong to God. The Sabbath is a sign. The Sabbath is the one that actually helps us to know that we belong to God. But now let's actually understand what really a seal is. Bible commentary, page, uh, uh, book 4, page 1161 says, just as soon as the people of God are sealed in their foreheads, sealed in their foreheads, it is not any seal or mark that can be seen, but a settling into the truth, both intellectually and spiritually, so they cannot be moved. Just as soon as God's people are sealed and prepared for the shaking, it will come. Indeed, it has begun already. That's what we learned uh, on Wednesday. We're talking about shaking. Shaking has already started and shaking is going on right now. People of God are being sealed at the moment. They are settling into the truth both intellectually and spiritually. Now, the seal is not a mark that is visible. The mark of the beast is not a mark that is visible. Because the seal is not a mark that is visible, the mark of the beast is not the mark that is visible. We can no never say that an injection is a mark of the beast. We can never say that, you know, a bank card is a mark of the beast. We cannot equate a mark of the beast to anything that we can see. Why? Because the seal of God cannot be seen, the mark of the beast definitely cannot be seen as well. The devil always imitates what God is doing. Now, let's actually look at uh, how God's people are marked or how God's people are sealed. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of them that sigh and cry for the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So those who receive the seal or those who receive a mark of God are those who sigh and cry for the abominations which are taking place in the earth today. Abomination which are taking place in the church of God. Abominations which are taking place among us. Now the question is who will receive the seal? Now I like what uh, uh, Ellen White says in the book Maranatha page 2, 240 paragraph 4. By the way, I when I'm preaching, I use a lot of spiritual prophecy in the Bible, getting my counsel from Revelation chapter 12 verse 17. We say that you know the remnant who keep that who actually believe in the testimony and also they believe in the commandments of God. So my understanding and my belief is that you know if I've got something that can amplify what I'm talking about, why then should I not use it? So I find it joy to study the spiritual prophecy together with the Bible. What the spiritual prophecy does, it leads us to the Bible. It just helps us to explain. But if you can actually, you can, uh, you can be able to explain this without using the spiritual prophecy. But if we have the spiritual prophecy, then it's a blessing to use the spiritual prophecy because it was given for our benefit. It says, not all who profess to keep the Sabbath will be sealed. There are many even among those who teach the truth 
to others who will not receive the seal of God in their foreheads. They, have, they had the light of truth. They knew their master's will. They understand every point of, the tr of truth or, of our faith, but they had not correspondence work. So there are many of us, we know how to dress. We know how to eat. We know how to drink. We know how to marry and give in marriage. We know how to conduct ourselves. We know the principles of God, but unfortunately we don't do them. In other words, our lives are not in correspondence with the truth, the light we have received. Because our lives are not in correspondence with the light we have received, we will not receive the seal of God. Hence, it's actually very important for us to be honest, to be faithful, to be truthful so that we can receive the seal of the living God. The seal of the living God is only given to those who have been victorious over every sin, over pride, over every besetment, and they are standing as children of God, sanctified by the truth of God. But now let's actually look at what is the mark of the beast. And then we uh, go to the uh, next uh, uh, part of the presentation, towards the final part of the presentation. The mark of the beast, the Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 25, remember, it's very easy to understand. If the seal of God is the Sabbath, then the mark of the beast should definitely be a day because the devil always imitates. If God does one thing, the devil wants to do something which is similar. The Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 7, 25, And he shall speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change the times and laws, and they shall be given unto his hand until time, times, and the dividing of times. So the devil wear out the saints. He will think to change the times. And also... As he, as he think to change the times, he will also persecute the child saints. So he misleads, he persecutes, he try to change the time. Now the question is, which law did he try to change? We learn from the book Evangelism, page 234, paragraph 1. The change of the Sabbath is a sign or mark of the authority of the Roman uh, church. So this is the mark of authority. Those who understand the claims of the fourth commandment choose to observe the false Sabbath in the place of the true are thereby paying homage to the power by which alone it is commanded. So by which alone the power is commanded. This is the power that commands to disobey God. So by submitting ourselves and worshipping on the first day of the week we are giving homage to the beast says the mark of the beast is the papal sabbath hence this is now very clear to us that you know the mark of the beast is not an injection of covid it's not a number it's not a bank card it's not anything that we can see it's a day of worship it's where we give our homage to which has been accepted by the world in the place of the uh, day of God's appointed. Now the way the whole world has accepted will accept the mark of the beast. The whole world will accept the papal Sabbath. We can see the Sunday law movements at the moment. We can see these uh, these uh, climate uh, the, the, these climate issues. We can see the the family days being moved. We can see the movement of the Sunday law the Sunday law movements all over. And we can see the world seem to be embracing, and the world will eventually embrace Sunday as the day to rest. It will embrace Sunday as the day of the Lord. It will embrace Sunday as the mark of the beast. However, they will not say it's the mark of the beast, but they will say it's the day of the Lord. When in actual fact it's a counterfeit, which is the mark of the beast. Now when you read uh, from uh, the Catholic uh, 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 Catherine Catholic Church uh, Sentinel, May 21, 1995, I was actually surprised. All oh, these writings there on co the computer, uh, there's quite a lot of information which has been uh, written over there, which actually helps you to know what the Catholics believe, 
what they say Adventists believe and what they know that Adventists believe. You know, I was actually very impressed as I was reading. I've read uh, some and I actually decided to write a sermon. It's on the Herald Report YouTube channel about what the Catholics say about Adventists. There's a sermon which I preach which says, can Adventists join ecumenism? And I was actually using the material from Catholicism, what they say about Adventists and what they believe that Adventists will never do. Now it says perhaps the boldest thing, the most revolutionary change the church ever did happened in the first century. The Holy Sabbath, the Holy Day, the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday, not from any directions noted in the scripture, but from the church sense of its own power. So now this church is so powerful because they say that they can change the Bible. That's what we learn from the book of Daniel chapter 7, 25 says, people who think that the scripture should be the sole authority should logically become Seventh-day Adventist and keep Saturday holy. That's why there are only two churches in the world which is Revelation chapter 17, uh, which is the false church, and the Revelation chapter 12, which is the true church. Revelation chapter 17 is the mother of all hallowed. She has got many daughters. And Revelation chapter 12 is only one church which is faithful to the husband. Revelation chapter, uh, chapter 17, she has got a lot of doctrines taken from paganism. Revelation chapter 12, she's standing on the true gospel of the truth. She doesn't take from anywhere. She's faithful to the church, to the principle which Jesus laid down is the church of the apostles. So, so therefore, as children of God, it's actually very critically important for us to be in the church of Revelation chapter 12, which is the church which keeps the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Now the whole world will be forced to worship on Sunday. As that will happen now, let's actually go back now to Revelation chapter 13 where we started. Verse 16, and it causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and born to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy nor sell save he that is a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So if he is going to force everyone to worship. If he's going to force everyone, therefore it's actually very important, my brothers and sisters, that we realize that you know, if there's not going to be buying and selling, money will be the key. So if money is the key, the problem is not about, the problem will be on how am I going to buy? How am I going to sell when in actual fact I don't have the passport to do that? So now the question is how am I going to survive as a child of God? Everything depends on preparation. Everything depends on preparation. Both intellectually and spiritually, physically, mentally, how prepared are you? The way how you conquer in a crisis is how you have prepared for the crisis. If you have not prepared for the crisis, it will catch up with you badly. I was talking uh, to my colleagues and we were talking about coronavirus and we were trying to argue. They were arguing about why there has been so much death in, uh, in England. And I was saying, uh, they were saying, listen, the problem with England is that, you know what, they were not prepared. They were careless and unprepared. That's why people were dying like flies. Uh, coronavirus has affected every country. And why, how come only in England such a high number of deaths? Do you know, I learned something from there. By the way, we, we have got freedom of speech uh, in talking this. We are not lying. And they've actually made it very clear in the papers that, you know, we were overwhelmed. We were not prepared for the disaster. It came unprepared. It was too much for us. And then so I spoke to my colleague. He works in the hospital. And at one point, there was so much death in the hospital. And he said, you know what? The situation was so overwhelming. Nobody knew such a disaster could happen. We didn't have any place to put these patients there were no ventilators and that's the reality unpreparedness caught up with us because of unpreparedness disaster happened great control page 6 to 1 paragraph 1 says the time of trouble such as never was is soon to open upon us and we should need we shall need an experience which we do not now possess we don't have the experience so far we don't have we don't possess it and which many are too indolent to obtain 
It is often the case that trouble is greater in anticipation than in reality, but this is not true of the crisis before us. The most vivid presentation cannot reach the magnitude of the ordeal. In other words, the most vivid presentation cannot reach the magnitude of the ordeal. In other words, we, you cannot give an explanation of how this trouble is because it has never happened before when nobody can buy and sell without the mark of the beast and your kids are crying for food, your kids are hungry, your kids are telling me you that you, are, you want to eat and you are stuck in the apartment right on the 17th floor and you are trying to wonder the only thing that you can do, you have to go down and then you go and get food from the shop but now for you to do that you need the mark of the beast how are you going to survive oh it's going to be tough my brothers it's going to be tough hence preparation is key so there are quite a lot of the crisis will hit in many different angles but let's look on one food crisis because nobody can buy and sell and the real crisis will be on food and you know by the way food controls food is the most challenging temptation uh, that's why the first temptation which uh, uh, Adam and Eve were given was on food. The first temptation to Jesus Christ was on food. It says in the book Adventist on page uh, 141, Again and again the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provision. For in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be very serious. If the problem of buying and selling will be very serious in the future, and we believe that Jesus will come in our time, is there no wisdom by us now beginning to prepare to move out of these big cities where there will be a problem? If we believe that Jesus will come on our time, don't we think that it's actually much wiser for us to prepare? Now it says we should now begin to heed the instruction given us over and over again. What was the instruction given to us over and over again? Get out of the cities into rural districts where the houses are not crowded closely together and where they will be free where they will be free from the interference of enemies. Ah, do we believe this? Ah, <laughs> you know, the moment you talk about this message, you say, oh, he has started again. Oh, this, these guys have started again. Oh, these guys, they don't even know what they are talking about. I tell you what, if ever there was a lesson, I learned it in the previous lockdown. And we actually realized that, you know what, the city can just be locked and we are locked in there. We used to go to Tesco in the queue, we last for over two hours waiting outside to get into the shop. And you go to those basic commodities that you want. You go to the soya milk for the baby. They say you cannot buy more than three. You go to rice, you can only get two kg. You go to tissues, you can only get one pack. We realize that these things are happening. You go to the fruit section, all the fruits are gone. What exactly am I saying? I am saying that, you know what, crisis can catch up with us. And if it catches us with unprepared, it will be very, very difficult. Now is the time my brothers and sisters that we should take heed to what God have said you know when God created man he put him in the garden of Eden and many was to eat that which he was producing that's why Genesis chapter 2 8 says and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in the gar east, east, eastward in Eden and he put men whom he had formed so that men can work in the garden and then verse 15 and the uh, chapter 2 verse 15 and the Lord God took the, the men well, chapter verse 16, sorry. And the Lord God commanded th them, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. How I love to plant my things. How I love to produce. I was raised by a farmer. And um, I enjoy farming. And I look forward that I'll be farming once more very soon. And then I'll play with the land. And then we'll see how things happen there. But you know, looking at where we are, Right now we are in the cities. It was never the plan of God. When you read from the testimonies uh, or the Ministry of Healing, page 363, it was never the desire of God that uh, we should live in the cities. The desire of God was that we can produce for ourselves. Now, because it was uh, never the desire of God, the desire of God is that we go back to the original plan. So it says, uh, in the beginning, 
He placed them, I'm reading from the second sentence, in the beginning he placed our first parents amidst the beautiful sights and sounds uh, he desires us to rejoice in today. So this is the desire of God that even today we should be in a place where we enjoy nature, we listen to the birds singing, we go out in the nature, we have time to pray and meditate in the nature. And then that was the original plan. And uh, that plan, when actually we live in, uh, in nature, it means that we can enjoy good weather, we can enjoy fresh air, we can walk and exercise, we can work on the ground strengthening our muscles, we can eat the healthy stuff, and we can have time to meditate, trusting in God, and we can have rest. That would be the best life to live. And those that's you know most of us we live in uh, the city. We said we go for holiday. We'll be going to some places where we can enjoy nature. Sometimes some places where we can enjoy resting is actually good. But you know we need to enjoy resting every 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 week. We should have a communion with our God. Now, but now when we come to the end of the days, there are quite a number of reasons why people should not live in the city. One of them is for the sake of. Uh, uh, but today, let's uh, apart from many other reasons which are good, but I just want to focus on one reason, uh, which uh, Christ. Uh, it says in the book, uh, uh, Country Living, page 21, paragraph 1, the Protestant world have set up an idol Sabbath in the place where God's Sabbath should be. And they are trading in the footsteps of the papacy. What happened in the, 530, in the 538 AD, there was a great persecution for the children of God. And now the papal Sabbath is being set up, the counterfeit is being set up again. It says, for this cause, uh, for this reason, there is necessity of the people of God to move out of the cities into retired country places where they may cultivate the land and raise their own produce. Thus they may bring their children up with simple healthful habits. I see the necessity of making haste to get all things ready for the crisis. So now, let's get ready for this crisis. Why should we get ready for this crisis? Because if it catches with us and we are not prepared, we will not be able to cope. And then it says, the work of the people of God is to prepare for the events of the future. Preparation is the key, which will soon come upon them with, with blind force. It will come on our way. In the world, gigantic monopolies will be formed. So now, when these gigantic monopolies are formed, men will bind themselves together in unions that will wrap them in the folds of the enemy. A few men will combine to grasp all the means to be combined in certain lines of business. You know, Amazon is now in control. Alibaba is now in control. These are giant monopolies which are taking over. These big tech companies, they are taking over and they are controlling. And what then happened? Trade unions will be formed. And those who refuse to join this union will be the marked men. Now, when you are marked because you don't want to be in a system, it will not be easier for you to live at that time, to, to be in that kind of situation. Hence, we need to prepare for these disasters coming. Adventist 1 page 139 paragraph 4 says, The time has come when God's people, when. Now, listen, as we make a move, as we seek to follow what God says, as we move step by step, it says, The time has come when God opens the way. Now, God will not open the way at the same time. People will not leave the city at the same time. People will not respond the same time because God is speaking to us differently let me give an example of myself I came to England uh, 21 years ago I came by myself when I'm living in England I will live by myself I did not come with anyone apart from myself now I've got a family so of course when I go I'll go with my family but the point which I'm trying to drive home is this God speaks to us differently don't try to follow your neighbor. You are not your neighbor. You'll be very disappointed if you try to follow your neighbor. But listen to the voice of God. But the question is this, do you know when God is speaking? Because sometimes you may not know when God is speaking, yet he is actually speaking. But when you know when God is speaking, then you'll be able to listen to his voice and respond to what he's saying. The time has come when as God opens the way, 
families should move out of the cities. If God has opened the way, my brother, move. Has God opened the way? Please move. If God has opened the way for you to move, then respond if you are a child of God. The children should be taken into the country. The parents should get as, as suitable a place as their means will allow. Don't try to live like a billionaire who has got a farm, who is actually enjoying life. Just live a simple life. Though the dwelling may be small, yet there should be a land in connection with it that may be cultivated. So therefore, the time of preparation is today, before the declaration of the National Sunday Law. And when the National Sunday Law is declared, it's the last warning, it's time to run, and you lose so many things, like Lot who left Sodom and leaving everything in Sodom, he went without. So therefore, please, <laughs> make a preparation today. Today, today when you hear his voice, Psalms 95, Hebrews chapter 4, today, Make a haste to prepare. He said, the time is not far distant. He says in the book Maranatha, the time is not far distant when, they, when, like the early disciples, we shall be forced to seek a refuge in the desolate and the solitary places. As the siege of Jerusalem by the Roman armies was a signal for, for flight to the uh, Judean Christians, so the assumption of power on the part of the, our nation, United States, in the decree enforcing the Papal Sabbath will be a warning to us. Hence, it's actually very important for us to understand what the mark of the beast is all about. Because the mark of the beast is the usurping of authority of the United States and declare making the image of the beast, forcing people to worship, to keep the Sunday. It will be, then be time to leave the large cities. Well, if, how are you going to leave the large cities if you are not prepared? Then preparation should have taken place. It will then be the time to leave the large cities, preparation to, uh, to leaving the smaller ones for retired homes in secluded places among the mountains. Hence, tomorrow, we are going to look at the stages in the National Sunday Law. Therefore, now is the time, my brothers and sisters, to receive the seal of God. Now is the time, my brothers and sisters, to make our calling and election sure. Now is the time of my, my, my brothers and sisters to ensure that we have understood the law of God, we have learned the law of God, we have prepared for all that we need to prepare. Listen, it's not very important. It's important to leave the cities. But to leave the cities without the seal of God, it's useless. It's important for us to do all the necessary preparation, but to do all those preparation and forget to prepare your character is useless. Therefore, it's very important for us to understand that God is putting a seal on the foreheads of his people today. And the seal of God will never be put upon the forehead of, in, of impure men or women. It will never be placed upon the forehead of the ambitious, world-loving men or a woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of a man or woman of false tongues and deceitful hearts. All who receive the seal of God, must, the seal of God must be without spot before God. Candidates of heaven. This is a call of God, my brothers and sisters, to be sanctified, to be honest, to be faithful, to be truthful, to live a life of victory. Hence, it's actually very important for us to understand the message of victory over sin. And the time to be victorious over sin is today. The time to understand the voice of God is today. The time to take God as its word is today. The time to do the will of God is today. And when we do that, we are strengthened to be able to stand for the disaster that is coming. How am I going to prepare? I will only be able to prepare by ensuring that I live in harmony with the truth revealed to me. When I live in harmony with the truth revealed to me, then I am already fully prepared. Has God revealed to you what to do? Has God told you what to do? Has God convicted you what to do? Has God convicted you of your sin? Have God convicted you and led you to repentance? The time for preparation is today. 
And the best that we can do is to flee with our lives and turn back to God. This is the most sure word of prophecy, to take heed to what God says and do exactly that. Shall we?